What should be the credit hours, minimum credit hours borrowed? That is mentioned, accepted in some universities, ex not accepted in some universities. That they call a professor who has got some administrative job. He has to teach 10 hours per hour, not more than that. An associate professor, 12 hours per hour. An assistant professor, 14 hours per hour, and a lecturer, 16 hours per hour. In Bangladesh, he's the contest. But you were mentioning about this university. In <coughs> university, lots of things has to be done yet. And therefore, faculties of these universities are involved in many other duties too. <coughs> so, if you ask me, I would say honestly that probably they are not get, getting enough time to concentrate to their lectures so that it should be a standard. Uh, I was telling to many of you that probably we will get rid of it when we have more faculties uh, appointed in coming years, hopefully. Then probably one of you will not be in three or four committees to work with simultaneously. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you ask me, are you getting proper time to prepare yourself for the standard quality classes? Maybe, maybe you are not getting at this point. Mm -hmm. Is it okay? I think that, that was the most sincere and most honest answer. You can have someone with the knowledgeable and wisdom, isn't it? I found it is very fascinating answer what you have said. Most honest, you know? Uh, yes, David. Yes. Um, I think what I'd like to do is to just give you a little bit of personal experience on that one. Because, um, Many years ago, when I first started to teach, I, like you, was thinking, how can I really pour a pint into a half pint glass? Because I, I was running out of time, and yet the pressure was put on me to complete tasks, and I was, in effect, um, investing three hours for every one hour of delivery. So, the time was just, the time burden was getting heavier and heavier. So I went back to source and I explained the situation and then suddenly what actually happened was they, they started to look at the, at the burden that was placed on individual tutors irrespective of their scale. And they suddenly realised that there was very little support coming from the administration side and an understanding from the senior management board. It was only then did things start to change. So over a period of time, it started to evolve. <coughs> and once it started to evolve, it suddenly appeared that, um, and, and it was understood that everybody, irrespective of where they, they stood within the academic environment, whether it be administration staff, to to senior staff, everybody contributed towards the quality assurance subject. So it's everybody's responsibility, not just the academic staff, because they all feed into one common cause. So it, it takes time to evolve, it will organically grow. And once that, that understanding starts to creep into the processes and procedures, and you get that support, that's when the quality assurance starts to go up the scale. The barometer of quality starts to rise, and that comes, uh, and that assists with the reputation as well. And um, that's, that's probably where I, I can leave it. But it's, it, it is time effective, but it's also patience and allowing the organisation to organically grow uh, in size and understanding that, that will, will become a clear understanding where the support needs to be. Um, and the greatest thing of all, the greatest quality that teachers 
must have is patience. Absolutely. Believe me, I know exactly what you're feeling, and I, I, I agree with absolutely every word you say. Um, but it, it's, it's, it's a question of, um, sometimes we have to just run with it, do the best we can, and if you're saying to yourself, I've done a damn good job, to, to the best of my ability, given the time and the tools that I've had, I can't be any more dedicated than that. And that should be recognized. Thank you. Thank you, David. I think that's what you need to I think, you know, that is 